What's going on good you guys your boy here the thing is giving my WB WrestleMania 29 review uh, honestly uh, WrestleMania was an alright pay-per-view you know ordinary thing for a standard or You know, this, I think this WrestleMania on, on paper, you know, was kind of predictable and kind of showed tonight why and what, what I'm talking about, but I'll get to that a little later. But, uh, you know, let's start off, all right? Well, we have to forget the Miz versus Wade Bar. Uh, mental Chino. This match in itself was too Sheamus, Randy Green, and the Big Show. And Smash was, uh, was alright. Um, you know, I know a lot of people were suspecting he was going to turn you over, you know, over, you know. I had like a chance to turn him turning you over, but, you know, I wasn't, you know, banking on it with you. So, uh, nonetheless, the Shield do win. Uh, you know, the Big Show, you know, didn't, you know, Randy Orton got, you know, pinned. Big Show stood there, didn't do anything, so... And then afterwards, he kind of, you know, beat up a bit on Sheamus and Randy Orton, so I guess we're going to have a Big Show and Randy Orton feud in the future? I have no idea. Anyway, so next you had Mark Henry versus Ryback. Um, this match, the crowd was dead for this match. I mean, they were just like... You know what I mean? They were just, they were just dead, you know, nothing happened, you know, type of deal, so. Anyways, you know, Mark Henry versus Ryback. It was, uh, you know, it wasn't, it was alright, you know. You got a little Feed Me More chant, but, you know, surprisingly enough, Mark Henry went out. I think it was like the only match that I predicted wrong. And the whole that, you know, I thought Ryback would win. You know, it makes sense because, you know, Ryback, you know, kept on losing to Punk. He lost to the Shield. Okay, maybe he'll get a WrestleMania moment, he'll beat Mark Henry. No, he loses to Mark Henry. And then Mark Henry, after the match, goes up to try to beat Ryback, but then Ryback, you know, beats up on Mark Henry. So it's like, he looks good in the loss, I guess. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you had the tag team title match, Team Hell No. You know, Kane and Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston. Uh, no. <laughs> This match was decent, you know, yeah, decent, you know, you had, you know, not, a lot of the audience have never seen really Big E Langston in a match, uh, but, you know, nonetheless, you had Team Hell No winning, I thought it'd be possibly somewhere down the road a few, few weeks ago they would break up, but then I thought, okay, maybe not. This was just to give all these guys something to do, you know, they, you know, what what else were you going to give Dolph Ziggler to do on this card, really, so, and they had the tag team champion, so, so yeah, Team Hell No retains. Next you have Fandango, I don't care if I say his freaking name wrong, because I can't stand him, versus Chris Jericho, and actually, this match was actually better than I thought it did. You know, I thought Jericho helped Van Dank a lot in this match. I thought he did pretty good with the selling and whatnot. Um, you know, Jericho was selling a knee injury. And then Van Dank literally rolls him up with tights, one, two, three. And I sat there going, okay, I knew Van Dank was going to win, but he had to win it like that. <laughs> you know, you're going to have Van Dank hit, like, this new finisher or something. Or they have, have they yet to come up with a new finisher Van Dank? No, I guess it's just he rolls him up. You know what I mean? One, two, three. So, kind of a little bummed out about that, you know, it's like, uh, but, 
you know, it's, it's, it's whatever, you know what I mean? Jericho's just doing what, you know, getting a paycheck and just simply letting young guys go over because he's just thinking, he likes guys, young guys going over, history of showing, so. Anyways, uh, you got the World Three Championship match, Jack Swagger versus the Bro De Rio. Now, I thought it was interesting, too, about this match was, before even the match even happened, they didn't even show Jack Swagger's entrance. You know, they did a little commercial thing, and next they did a promo, and the next thing you know, you see Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger already in the ring. You know, Zeb Coulter's kind of a promo, and then here comes out real, looking like Muhammad Ali with the freaking row and everything. And he has his little fireworks, you know, Mexican, you know, the green, the white, and the red, you know, bing bing bing, you know. But, uh, but nonetheless, the world title match was actually pretty good. You know, I actually thought this was going to open the show, not, you know, the Shield versus, you know, Team W, I guess you could say. Uh, but, again, this match wasn't too bad. I liked it. Not bad. Uh, you know, Rio wins arm break. You know, I know people were saying, Oh, come on, Ziggler. Come on, Ziggler. Come on, Ziggler. And there was no Dolph Ziggler. So. Another day. <laughs> so next we get CM Punk versus The Undertaker. And to me, by far, this was match of the nights. This was... I want to say this is the greatest Taker match he's had. You know, I thought both matches he's had with Triple H, Gutta. You know, and both matches he had with Shawn Michaels were better. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, this kind of reminded me of Taker versus Edge a little bit at WrestleMania 24. You know, this was, it was alright. You know, it wasn't, again, the greatest. But it was good. It was a good and durable match. You know, he had a nice little spot. You know, CM Punk jumping off the top rope into the Spanish announce table, even though the announce table didn't break, and I'm sitting there going, okay, really? Um, but, and, <laughs> oh god, when Punk hit that TS Taker and took no sold it, sold it, I was like, what? <laughs> uh, and then, you know, the whole urn thing, and the referee was down, and I was like, oh, but, you know, it was still a good and durable match, you know. Should it have happened? Should Taker have come back for this match? I don't know, but unless... You know, I thought this was, I guess, the best Punk and Taker match they've ever had, because if you guys remember Hell in a Cell, you know, way back when, and, you know, was it Breaking Point? You know, they had matches that you sit there going, ugh. But this one was good, enjoyable. I liked it. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Uh, not not part two, but, like, re-watching it. Mm -hmm, so. Anyways... Uh, next you have the whole no whole bar match between Triple H uh, with his good buddy Shawn Michaels uh, versus Brock Lesnar. Uh, and you remember uh, the stipulation is uh, if God lost, uh, what would happen now? Uh, he'd have to retire. Uh. But anyway, Triple H, uh, it started off pretty slow. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, for a no hole bar match, this started off slow, and I sat there going, oh. But you know. It started to pick up, and it started to end up pretty good. You know, he started getting weapons, he started to get the steel chair, he started getting in the uh, uh, stairs case, you know. So, it, it was it was getting enjoyable, it was getting good. And then, you know, you had uh, one point where Paul Heyman gets the steel chair, and it looks like he's about to hit Triple A's, and I don't know where Shawn Michaels is hitting with the sweet shit and music. And then, you know, HB, you know, Shawn gets hit with the F5, and then... And it's just becoming a little bit of a cluster right there, but, uh, you know, Triple H in the pedigree on the steel steps, one, two, three. You know, Triple H, the god lives, uh, and gets his rematch, uh, you know, gets his revenge, uh. But, uh, you know, it was a nice match, you know, it was better than one expected, you know. When I saw this on paper, I was like, ugh, I don't know how good this is going to be, because that's SummerSlam, but, you know. But anyway, so time for, that's right, guys. Oh, yeah, you also had P. Diddy before me tonight. Forgot to mention that P. Diddy. Uh, well, it was still better than freaking, uh, goddamn, what's his name, uh, Machine Guns? Oh, uh, oh god, that was horrible last year, oh my god. But anyways, um, so apparently the Bellas and the Funkadactyls and the Brodus Clay, Tensai, and Road Scholars match never happened. I guess that's the post show or something, I don't know, but he got scrapped off from the main card, so now we have the main event. John Cena versus The Rock, WWE Championship match, twice in a lifetime, and uh, the crowd was dead at the beginning, again, the crowd was dead, apparently, you know, the crowd was chanting, boring, boring, and the match itself wasn't too bad until 
Keyword, guys. I said until. So don't shoot at me. Oh, look, the match was good. How dare you? Listen to me. The match was good until you had every freaking finisher every freaking two minutes. Like, oh my god. Like, what is this? Smackdown versus Raw? Like, back in the day when you hit a finisher? Oh, kick out. Finisher. Kick out. Finisher. Kick out. There were so many false finishers. There were like eight. Alright. Freaking Cena kicked out of like three rock bottoms. Brock kicked out like three attitude adjustments to the end. I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then it looked like The Rock was copying Cena. Because remember last year when Cena, Cena was like, oh yeah, ha, ha, the people's elbow, and that's how he lost? Well, Rock was going to do the same thing with the whole attitude adjustment. He's like, I don't attitude adjust, excuse me, the five necker shuffle. He's like, and I was like, oh god, it's going to end like that. You know, and then it was like, okay, it was just too much. You know, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, Cena finally hits the attitude adjustment and it's over. And, you know, he's a WWE champion. I'm not going to say you're going, oh, John Solo, he's probably triple with 13 time world champion. You know? But, oh my god, how many freaking finishers do you need in that goddamn match? Wait, good god. Ugh. And I have no idea who's going to face Cena now, unless they're going to do a rematch thrice in a lifetime, or unless they want to save that for next year. But, you know, I'm not saying this match was bad at all. You know, I thought last year's match was a bit better, and this one was okay. But, goddamn, I would enjoy it more if it was, like, not so many old people's elbow. Oh, attitude just, oh, uh, you know, at freaking people's elbow. Oh, like, oh my god. You know, the STF, like, god damn. Nonetheless, though. <laughs> You know, I'm not gonna sit here and say this was the worst WrestleMania ever, because I know some people sit here and go, WrestleMania, worst WrestleMania ever. And, and I always seem like every single year I've noticed since I've been on YouTube, oh, this is the worst WrestleMania ever next year. Oh, this is the worst WrestleMania. I'll take it back. This is the worst WrestleMania. I'm not gonna say this is the worst WrestleMania. It was an average, it was an average WrestleMania. It wasn't spectacular. It wasn't horrible like I didn't, I didn't I didn't feel like I was watching WrestleMania 25 all over again or 27 that I wanted to blow my brains out but you know it was an alright paper so nonetheless that's it for me you guys hope you guys enjoyed this video did you guys enjoy WrestleMania let me let me know guys comments down below you know what to do peace